Everybody. I wanted to do a little project with you for Artists for Everyone that is a nice little gift um, and we can make uh, two bookmarks we're gonna make two bookmarks and we're gonna make them in the arts and crafts style so I don't know if you are familiar with the arts and crafts movement but it was originated in this country in America at the turn of the century, early 1900s, by a man named Albert Hubbard. And there is a big, vast history on that. But it all happened right here in my village. And so if you want to, you can Google that. Um, you can Google the Roycroft in East Aurora, New York. And you will see a lot about the history of the place where I have my studio. My studio is in the historic Roycroft print shop that was built in 1901. And it's a very special place to me. And there is a, a very specific style to the arts and crafts movement in this country and in England and in other places. And I thought we would make a couple of bookmarks featuring a dogwood flower in the arts and crafts style. So I'm going to go over the materials. Um, we're going to be using the Strathmore watercolor postcards. And if you don't have them, you could certainly just cut a piece of cold press watercolor paper um, to a four by six size. Um, I have my Wild Thorn Artist for Everyone paints, but as always, I've listed in the description box below substitutions for all of the colors that I use um, in case you have your own watercolors and do not have the Wild Thorn paints. And then I have a little ruler. <clears throat> I have my triple zero squirrel mop or any pointed round paintbrush in a similar size for watercolor. I have an eraser, just any eraser will do. I have a pencil, this is a 2B pencil, um, but an HB is fine, this is just what I have handy here. And then I have three pens. <clears throat> I have uh, Pigma Micron Fine Liner in 005, and actually this one is about out of juice, so I'm going to see if I can find, hmm, let's see here, here's another one, so this one is a Sakura Micron Pigma in 005, so basically you want a permanent black ink marker with a very fine tip, that's really all you need, even an, a super fine Sharpie would be fine. And then I also have um, a Tombow brush pen, and this is uh, a, a flexible felt tip pen with a permanent black ink. And I have one other pen that I thought I would show you guys, and my friend Christina Mazzoni, who has a wonderful YouTube channel that you should check out, um, used this in one of her videos, and she told me about it, and I ordered it. It was very inexpensive on Amazon. I got four pens for I think like eight dollars and it's called the Elegant Writer and it's made by Speedball and we're going to use that as well and it's super fun especially for little projects like this. So you, you certainly don't need it to do this project but I just thought I'd show it to you because I'm having a lot of fun with it. So to begin I'm going to take a piece of my Strathmore watercolor postcard and we just need one piece and I'm going to draw a line down the center um, and try to make it even. <laughs> I'm never very good at that. It's funny, you know. I don't know why, but I've never been good at measuring and things like that. So <clears throat> I'm just going to use a ruler to draw a line down the center and that's the line where I'll cut it later. Okay? And then I'm going to make two squares. And I'm going to make one on this end, and I'm just going to use my ruler to mark off a square. Let's see here. So I'm going to do it and leave a little bit of room. On either side. And then go up this way. And this way, 
So I have a little square. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? And within the square, I'm going to draw a line down the center. And then I'm going to divide it again this way, so I kind of have a cross in the center. All right? And then I'm going to do the same over here. So I'll use my ruler again, just because it's easier for me to draw a straight line. I'm not very good at it. Um, let's see here about the same and again we're not looking for perfection here but just a basic square at the top of our bookmark okay and I'll do the same put a line down the center and then a line this way so I'll just start on this end and I'm going to draw a dogwood flower and so in the very center, I'm going to draw just a circle. And then I'm going to draw some small circles around the outer edge of the big circle. It's not even big. It's, it's very tiny, but just, just something like that. And then I'm going to draw heart shapes coming on the side of each line. At the top of the heart shape, I'm going to draw a circle. Okay? So pretty simple. So I'll go over, move over here and I'll do the same. Heart shape, just sort of playing off the one I had before. And then a circle at the top of the heart shape. And then over here I'll do the same. Heart shape, circle at the top, and then one more. All right, so it's a very kind of basic dogwood shape. And where a lot of the arts and craftsmen um, would use these kinds of motifs are on tiles or stained glass. So they would simplify the natural ob object like a, like a dogwood flower or a rose or a ginkgo leaf, and they would simplify it to use in stained glass work or on tiles. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, and I'll draw a circle in the middle and some circles around the outside and then I'll start with my heart shape with a circle at the top and just make my way around if it doesn't quite match you can always go over it and we'll erase that later but again not looking for perfect we're looking for handmade from our clumsy little hearts <laughs> our clumsy lovely hearts okay so now I have the makings of two bookmarks here and the first thing I want to do is put ink lines down on top of my pencil drawings then I'm gonna turn the video off because we're gonna let that ink dry completely okay and then we'll come back again so on this side I'm gonna start with my fine liner pen and I'm going to draw a black line with the finer tip okay of that original X that we made and then these little circles And I'm even going to draw around the circles in the center. And so this is sort of a stained glass effect, okay, to have that dark line. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same. So I'm using the finer tip to draw over my pencil line where I made the X, sort of the cross. And then I'm going to go over the circles that I drew not the heart shapes. Okay, so once this ink dries, it's permanent and it won't be affected by our watercolor. Now on one of them, 
I'm going to use the thicker brush pen. Okay, so a thicker black marker, even just a, just a regular fine Sharpie would be fine as long as it's waterproof. All right. And with this pen, I'm going to draw over the heart shapes and try to follow my pencil lines. I just want a little bit of a thicker line here. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm not um I'm not going to use a fine line on the outside. I'm going to use this thicker pen to draw around the box that we made. And again, if you're not perfectly straight, that's really okay. And I hope that you'll try this project several times. And you'll make a little collection of bookmarks that you can keep some for your books and some to send out to other people. Okay. And then I'm not gonna worry about the top edge. All right, now <clears throat> for the flowers, okay, for one of them, I use the, the fine, the, the thicker brush pen, but on this one, I'm gonna use the Elegant Writer, all right? Now, this pen has a chisel tip, all right? And so I'm left-handed, and that is really, really awkward for me. It, I've never been able to figure that out with my left hand, my left handedness. So I'm just gonna use one corner of it to go over the heart shaped lines. And I wanna remember which one is which because I will treat them differently when I'm painting them. So I think um, how I can tell, hmm, I'm going to put that one up down here. This is the one I drew with a fine liner. And it's a little bit finer, actually, I mean with the Elegant Writer, it's a little bit finer than this one. So I'll try to remember it that way. All right, so now it's really, really important that we let our ink dry completely. So I'm going to turn the video off and, and go do some other things, and then I will be back when it dries. Okay? Alrighty, so my ink lines are now completely dry. And before I move ahead, I'm going to use my eraser to erase any pencil lines that are still visible. So by doing that, my drawing will look a lot cleaner. And you'll get eraser dust depending on what kind of eraser you use. But I'm just going around my drawings. I'm not going to erase the, the center line here because I want to see that later so I can cut it. I just want to get rid of my original pencil lines within my drawing so my drawing is cleaner. And then once that's done, I'll just take my hake brush and brush off the eraser dust. You can use a feather, you can use your fingers, but I tend to not like to, to use my fingers. So now I'm gonna start with the one with the thicker lines, which is the permanent black marker. And I'm going to use the Buff Teton. And I'm gonna get some of that on my brush and put it into my palette and add plenty of water to it. And I want a nice pool because I want to be able to paint all, all of them. But you see, I'm adding a lot of water to it. I want it to be kind of milky and fluid so it's not too dark. All right? And I am going to paint each petal of the dogwood flower, but I'm not going to paint the circles on the ends of the petals, and I'm not going to put the paint in that inner um, kind of flower of circles. And I just want to hold this up so you can see it. You see those 
the circle in the center, I'm not going to paint that. Okay, so I'll get paint on my brush, and I always kind of dab it off so I don't have too much. And I'm going to very carefully paint these petals. And so because my ink is dry, the black ink is permanent and it's not running into the paint as I apply it. So I'll do maybe two petals and pick up a little more of the buff teton and just drop it in. Because I, I don't need it to be totally uniform. And I'll just keep working around the flower. And we're going to do one, one at a time. <clears throat> See, I'm leaving the little um, circle shapes at the end without paint on them. So if you don't have buff titan or titanium buff, buff titanium by like Daniel Smith or one of those ecru colored paints, I have um, some ideas in the description box on how to mix a color like that. So now that that's done, I'm going to clean my brush and pick up just a tiny, tiny touch of mimosa on my brush, and I'm just going to touch it to the insides of the heart shape, just to give it a little bit of that clear yellow blush, okay? And then my last step for this part of the project is I'm going to take some of the gold mica, so an iridescent gold watercolor. And if you don't have that, you could also use a gold jelly pen. You could use a gold colored paint. But I'm going to be very careful, and I'm just going to paint the very center of that flower with the gold. All right, so this one is now done for this step. So now I'm going to turn, turn my paper around and I'm going to do the same thing. However, because I've used the Elegant Writer on this side, I'm gonna start with a water glaze and you'll see why. So the cool thing about the Elegant Writer is when I start adding water, I'm gonna add it all around the petal first, and then I'm gonna kinda of scooch it up to my line. Do you see how the ink is bleeding? And when this ink melts with the water, it becomes this beautiful blue-green color. So I'm being very careful. I'm using the tip of my brush. Do you see that? How pretty that is? Now, if I want to, I can take a clean piece of tissue and maybe blot it in one little area. And what happens is, when you blot it, it becomes pink. <laughs> it's so cool. So I can even add a little bit more water and just let it do what it's going to do, okay? If I wanted to, I could also take a bit of the buff titan and just drop it in here and there and let it just move around and mix with the ink. So I'm going to go around my flower and do the same thing to each petal, trying to stay inside the ink line. So I'll put the water down in the center first. I'm still avoiding those little circles. And then when I get close to the ink, I just let it sort of bleed in. And if some starts to bleed in from the other petals, that's okay. It's really hard to be that careful. But I'm gonna try. So do you see how I'm just touching the inner area of that ink line? And letting it bleed into the petal. I can just lightly touch a tiny bit of my paper towel to a section of it, and it'll get like a pink hue, and then drop in a bit of the buff titan. All right, and then I'm gonna keep moving around. So again, water in the center. Carefully come up to that ink line. Let the ink start running into the petal. Go around that circle. so pretty. Give it a little touch with the paper towel somewhere. Just 
to bring out that pink. And I don't know why that is, but when you blot it, you get a little bit of pink. <laughs> Drop in some Buff Teton. It's just beautiful. I, I hope you can see that. I'll hold it up when I'm done. And then the last petal. Just being very careful, as careful as I can around the edges. Give it a little blot. And then drop in some buff teton. That's it. And then for my final step, I'm going to take some of that gold mica on the tip of my brush and just paint the very center circle of my flower. So that's it. Um, I'm going to hold this up so hopefully you can see what that's doing. I hope you can see that. See that? Isn't that pretty? <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Okay, so this needs to dry completely um, before we can paint the, the little circles in the background. In the meantime, what we can do is we can put some gold around the edges. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to use my gold mica straight from the pan. I'm going to get a lot of it on my brush and dab my brush off so it's not too wet. And I'm going to keep turning my paper as I go. Now again, if you don't have a metallic gold paint, even a metallic acrylic would be perfect. Um, you can use gold pens, you can use um, a golden uh, toned watercolor, whatever you have. Or any color, it doesn't matter, but I just thought a gold edge would be sort of nice. So I'm going to go on the outside of that black line and I'm going to paint the gold paint all the way around my square. It's pretty thick, so it'll take a little while to dry. And I'm just going to keep turning my paper so I stay out of the way. <laughs> go right up to that pencil line that divides them because we'll cut that later. All right, and then I'm also going to put a row of it at the bottom and I'm going to try my best to keep it straight. And I might not succeed. But I'm drawing a line with the tip of my brush and then I'll fill in the rest. So you see how I'm just sort of rimming those three sides of the square in gold or any color. If you have silver try silver. Silver would be beautiful. Okay, so isn't that pretty? So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Just so using the tip of my brush and sort of pulling it along and I just keep getting more gold paint on my brush as I need it. And I'll turn it around and I'll do this side. Take it right up to that pencil line. Oops. So I went a little bit onto my black line and you know what, that's okay because when it's all dry, I can go over it again with some black paint. I don't know why, but straight lines have always been hard for me, and wait till you see me with scissors. I'm left-handed, so I've always had to use right-handed scissors. Left-handed scissors just were not available when I was learning how to cut. <laughs> um, 
And so I learned how to cut right-handed, and so I've never been very good at cutting a straight line. I'm a terrible seamstress because of that. I used to try to sew clothes for my daughter, and my patterns, when I would cut them out, um, would never quite match up. <laughs> okay, so everything is done that I can do right now. So I'm going to leave this alone, let it dry completely, and then we will be back to finish our project. Okay. Okay, so I am dry again here, and we're going to move ahead. Um, and I'm going to start with the dogwood that I painted without the Elegant Rider. And at the tip of do dogwood blossoms, at least the ones I'm thinking of, they have this tiny bit of blush. And I'm going to use the Wood Rose. And you can look at my list to find substitutions for that. And one paint that works really well uh, in substitution of Wood Rose, or Bois de Rose, I should call it, is called Venetian Red, and it's a very strong pigment, but when you add a lot of water to it, it becomes um, very similar to this paint. Not quite as beautiful, but it's. It, um, but I, I do have substitutions for it. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the Boada Rose on my brush, and all I'm going to do is paint tiny bits inside these circles. Now if I have too much paint on my brush I can wick it off and I'm just going to paint the insides of all these little circles that we drew except for the center one which was gold. And I'm going to move down here and paint these. So it's just the tip of my brush and I'm just sort of filling in that circle with the water rose. Any kind of peachy pearly pink would be fine. Okay, so that one's done and now I'm going to move over to this one and do the same. Now because I have to be mindful of the Elegant Rider line, I'm going to really focus on the very tip of my brush and try to stay inside the circle lines. And if a little bit runs in, that's okay. Okay. Now again, these are your dogwood flowers, and so you can choose any color you want to to paint the flowers, all parts of the flower. But these are just the ones that I wanted to use. Okay, so that part is done. And now we're going to put a background color. And because I have all of this gold and yellow, I'm going to use wood violet. So any kind of violet colored watercolor will do. And I'm going to move my paints a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some wood violet on my brush and, and make a little puddle of it in my palette or on a plate. So a nice little puddle there. And I'm going to start with a water glaze. And I'm going to paint each section by itself. So I'm going to put a little bit of water down because I want it to be sort of dreamy. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking a water glaze isn't even necessary. So we'll just go right with the wood violet. And I'm going to use the tip of my brush to very carefully paint in the wood violet. Staying within the lines as much as I can with the tip of my brush. Okay, so on this one it's fairly simple because we've got we've got the um, waterproof ink that we're dealing with so it's not going to run into our paint. But I'm still being careful and I'm still just using the very tip of my brush to put in the wood violet. And I love this color next to the gold because purple and yellow are complementary colors so they really make each other sing. This one I think I need a little bit more so you can just always just drop it in and let it kind of move around. 
and I'm being really careful not to touch the Bois de Rose that I already painted because then it would whoosh together, all right? So I could just keep continuing around, dropping in. Oop, see, it's tricky. You gotta use the tip of your brush. And move your paper, turn your paper as often as you need to to make it easier on yourself, truly. And always be mindful of where your wet paint is and try not to put your other fingers in there. I've done that plenty of times. I'm almost done. So I chose the wood violet. You could choose any color, but I really do like the violet next to the yellows and the gold. Okay, so that side of my bookmark is now done. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'll grab a little more of my wood violet, put some water in it, and on this side we're going to be extra careful. If we touch the elegant rider line, that's fine, but try to stay on the outside of it. It will mix beautifully if, it, if, if you do touch it. See, you, you really can't help but touch it a little bit, and it will bleed into it, but it'll be very pretty. And I'm just going to keep moving around. More than anything, be careful of those little circles where you painted the water rose. See how I'm holding my brush just down at the very tip? And that gives me more control. At least it does for me. It's, it's really beautiful. It truly looks like stained glass. It has a nice effect, this Elegant Writer. Um, the interesting thing about the Elegant Writer is if you were to make a larger drawing and, and use a watercolor wash on it, <clears throat> and you let it dry completely, and then you use a fine mister of water to just spritz your painting with a fine mist of water, it will set the black and then you can let that dry again and then you could use watercolor on top of it because as soon as as soon as it becomes wet and then dries again it becomes permanent isn't that cool i can't thank christina enough for introducing me to these pens they're really fun and christina has several uh, actually two now uh, videos using wild thorn paints on her channel too but she also uses many many different kinds of paints and she does the most wonderful beautiful loose watery watercolors I just love them okay so now my paintings are complete and the next step would probably be to let it dry before you cut it but I'm gonna give it a try because our gold paint is dry. Now don't laugh at my scissors. I should probably try, turn this off when I do it. Um, but I'm gonna try to cut a straight line. And then I'll turn it and try it again. <laughs> I'm just terrible at it, guys. I, I don't know what else to say. That's as good as I'm going to get, I think. And then when they're totally dry, I can clean this up a little bit. I, I'd like it to be nicer. If you have a paper cutter or an X-Acto knife, and that's probably what I'll do, is when... Well, let me just see. I can clean this up with an X-Acto knife later. But now you have two lovely bookmarks. 
see. Aren't they beautiful? They're both beautiful in their own way. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll give it a try and um, I hope you have better cutting skills than I do. <laughs> Anyways, I love this project. And one last thing, if you're giving them as gifts, you can even take a nice pen and write a line of a poem that you love or, or just a couple thoughts to your friend. Um, and then you could sign it with your monogram or your signature. And I think I'll just gonna, I, I think what I'm gonna do, actually, now that I think about it, I think I'm going to use my chop and I've got this nice little purple stamp pad and I'm going to ink up my chop and I'm going to put my chop at the bottom. Yeah, I like that. Because the watercolor paper is textured, the chop might not be smooth, but that's okay. I really like that effect. So there, they are complete. So that's our project for this week. Um, I've got a really busy work week ahead of me, so I probably won't have any more videos. I had a dandelion lesson that I uploaded the other day, and then this video, but I will be back next week with more of everything. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and thanks so much for being here.